The following program has been classified D for Dora. It contains long, obnoxious silences, irritating voices, and girls yelling enthusiastically at inanimate objects. Viewer discretion is advised. Watch out for quicksand, boo. Oh, howdy. How you going? Or as Dora would say, hola. hola. Oh, and this is my fellow explorer, Boo. How you doing, Boo? Anyway, since we've covered Pepper many times, I think it's time we talk about another lousy kids cartoon that is somehow branded as edutainment, Dora. And while Dora is not as inescapable as that sausage roll, at least Pepper only has a runtime of five minutes. Dora? Kids have to sit through 30 minutes of these Dora episodes. Dora makes us suffer through overly drawn out and extremely repetitive dialogue that treats a viewer like they're a single-celled organism, and not a very bright one at that. I swear the lack of imagination in this show is just astounding. So let's check out the top six abysmal Dora the Explorer episodes. I know, I know, I'm talking about a cartoon that is definitely not my demographic. But hey, I'm a silly reviewer, so let's do a silly review. And I still think these cartoons should stand up to critique. Good writing is incredibly important for kids. We can be so impressionable at that age. Preschool shows can be used to prepare kids for life. Okay, on to the countdown. Number six. Hick Boom Ah. What a unique title. This looks pretty harmless. What could possibly be so bad about it? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Oh, isn't that cute? Dora's whispering to us. I better put my headphones on so I can hear her. Can you hear me now? <sighs> so brace yourself, because this episode is all about Dora yelling phrases at us repeatedly, most of which are hick, boom, ah. What's that sound? Hick, boom, ah. What's that sound? Hick, boom, ah. And I assure you, after watching this episode, you will never want to hear that phrase again as long as you live. You see, Dora and Boots can hear a mysterious sound off in the distance. Yep, you guessed it, the dreaded <laughs> To find the location of the sound, Dora has to traverse through the noisy river and the quiet forest. So we can divide this episode into two sections. One, where the characters are insufferably loud. Will this make a loud noise? <laughs> and the other where the characters are slightly more tolerable. Come on, follow me. Hey Boo, look! It's the sentient parchment with cognitive intellectual functioning abilities. Here to deliver his truly stirring song. To teach our kids literary abilities. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Okay, so you're the map. Do you have anything else? I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Stop it! I get it, you're the I'm map! I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the map, I'm the Shut map. Shut up! <sighs> so we've comfortably established so far that this is the map. A detail I will not forget as long as I live. I know, it's hard not to empathize for the kids raised on this banal sugar job. This noisy river is so noisy! Tico can hear us! And you may have noticed that Dora has returned to her style of speaking, where you think she's an alien pretending to be human. Does speaking like this better help kids to tolerate the garbage in front of them? I don't think so, because Sesame Street has managed to converse with kids like normal human beings for decades. It's almost like Dora is just weird. To summarize, if you want to hear Dora continually yell at you and encourage children to yell at their computer screens, well, this is the episode for you. And for number five, Dora's hair-raising adventure. So what garbage is dragged up on the side of the road next? Why, Dora's hair-raising adventure, of course. This bare-bones story simply focuses on Boots and how he wants to give a photo to his mother as a birthday present. The only issue is that his hair keeps continually getting in his eyes, which gives Dora the idea of going to the barber shop with Boots to get him a haircut. So we're going to the barber shop, but don't worry if kids somehow forgot that one tiny detail, because we will hear that location repeatedly shouted to us over and over, just in case the kids forget. And they will demand that kids also shout that name. Going to the barber shop. Yell, Peluquero. Louder, Peluquero. 
I swear, sometimes it's like I'm being given the good cop, bad cop treatment by my computer. When Dora Demand yelled to me that I stand up for the fourth time, I dang well did it. Stand up, please. Stand up, stand up. I mean, I think she'd do great as a drill instructor. Look, Dora, it's a giant. Boots, that's very rude. Just because this young lady is taller than you, it doesn't make her a giant. She's seriously not that much taller than any other adult in the episode. Maybe they're just jerks, I don't know. So our two bizarre travelers pick up a giant, a hairy old troll, and continue their adventure to the barber shop. They also encounter hairy trees along the way, who combine their hairstyles to form jump ropes. Jeepers, and I thought my childhood shows were weird. We crossed the bridge, cha we went through the hairy trees. Cha -cha. So next is the... How could even a preschooler not manage to problem solve this one? How is any cognitive function even required to answer a multiple choice question with only one choice? And it's not like it's an instant decision either. They give plenty of time for the kids to mull this question over. Because apparently they assume their intellectual capacity is that of a water biscuit. I'm sorry to draw so much attention to this, but I'm pretty sure even goldfish could answer this one. Anyway, we finally arrive at the barber shop. The characters get their haircuts, and this disturbingly hairy episode can end. Dora's hair-raising adventure really highlights the shallowness of this series. Little to nothing happens throughout, just Dora solving a couple of, ahem, incredibly complex problems. Dora, this may be a hairy episode, but the substance for this one is just bald. Number 4. Dora Saves the Prince. Behold, Dora actually gives us a formidable villain, and it doesn't mesh particularly well. The episode begins with Dora reading a book about a prince who loses his ball in the witch's forest. Oh no! I wonder if he's going to go after it and something bad will happen. My ball! Mi pelota! You've been a naughty principe to come into my forest. I didn't even see it come. So when the prince tries to retrieve it, the witch captures him and locks him in her castle. And upon hearing this, the ever scientifically grounded Dora decides to magically transport herself inside the book. So apparently kids can now magically jump into books to save their favorite nursery rhyme characters? Once Dora and Boots arrive, they begin on their magic adventure to save the prince. Our heroine managed to stop her threats at every turn through her incredibly underwhelming diplomacy skills. Is a seven-year-old with a weird speech flair really the best person to be taking on kidnapping arcane magic wielders? I feel like Swiper is about the biggest threat Dora should be taking on. And when Dora finally reaches the castle, how does she stop this great threat to the world? Witch, we'll open the ball and let you out if you promise to be a good witch from now on. Do you promise? Of course! Why didn't I think of that? Now that's teaching kids life skills they can use. Why didn't we just walk up to the Nazi party during the Second World War and say, Hey Hitler, can you promise to be nice from now on, please? I'm sure the Nazi party would have said yes and been nice forever after. Why don't we just ask Kim Jong-un to be nice from now on? And please sign the nuclear peace treaty. Uh, sorry about that, I think my sarcasm is broken. Anyway, given that Dora's only shield against criticism seems to be that it's edutainment, there's really not that much educational content here. There was barely any Spanish taught to the kids except Abre over and over. And to their discredit, I barely remember what it means. I, I think it means open. And if a 32-year-old is struggling to remember, how's a kid meant to remember? And in terms of fulfilling the tainment aspect of edutainment, well, this episode really comes up as a real bore. Anyway, moving on. And the third abysmal Dora the Explorer episode is... Dr. Dora. Dora the Doctor! That's right, apparently this seven-year-old has 12 to 14 years doctorate experience at university, because she's Dr. Dora now. I feel there's real wasted potential here. I thought there was a real chance to teach kids first aid skills here. But instead, the episode abandons its medical theme soon after and adopts its ever-repetitive, stupidly simple problem-solving theme. The episode opens with Dora showing her stethoscope to the audience and demonstrating it by using it on boots. She eventually manages to find his heart, so I, I guess that kind of counts as first aid? Wow, Boots! Your heart sounds strong! 
Soon after, we hear Benny the Bull sneezing, so Dora decides to go to his farm and diagnose him. Because apparently Dora is now qualified to give a medical diagnosis? I feel like it's more important than ever before to teach kids, and adults particularly, to listen to medical professionals with over a decade of research and experience. Perhaps the seven-year-old girl who talks to inanimate objects shouldn't be our first source of medical diagnosis? To be fair though, she does help free people along the way, and their problems do fall more within her field of experience. Such as pulling a bucket off the foot of that weird giant chicken, or pulling thorns out of a crocodile's tail. I need to get all the thorns out! I don't know though, is that really the best procedure to be teaching kids when they encounter alligators? Here in Australia, crocodiles tend to ambush our residents at least once a year. I just don't know if approach them and pull on their tail is the best thing to be teaching kids. How about run screaming in the other direction? Though to be fair, I guess this falls within first aid, taking out thorns from a ferocious predator. The episode ends with Dora actually giving a reasonable diagnosis of what is making Benny sneeze so loudly. She deduces that he is, in fact, allergic to the plant in his home. But again, I really would have liked them to at least encourage kids to ask an actual doctor. Yeah, Benny. Dr. Dora is really good at helping people. In this misinformation age, it's so important to ask professionals. Anyway, I guess this episode's called Dr. Dora because at one point, Dora applies a bandage. Well done, Dora. And the second abysmal Dora the Explorer episode is... Dora Christmas Carol. How about a Christmas hat for this one, boo? Looks good on you. So anyway, Dora takes on a Christmas Carol. Because clearly no franchise is better suited to adapt the dark and grim Christmas Carol story than Dora the Explorer. This episode is focused on Dora and her friends at the Christmas Eve party, and just how each of them like to celebrate this holiday. But look out, cause the greedy swiper swoops in and nearly ruins the whole party. Much to my disappointment, Santa Claus does step in to stop the complete destruction of Dora's party. But as a consequence, Swiper is now on the naughty list. Oh, woe is me. Swiper pleads with Santa, so he gives him one more chance and tasks him and Dora with, uh, traveling through time? To undo the bad deed Swiper has done, or will do in the past and future, using magic capes given to them by the hairy old troll. It's a magical, mystical time travel cape. They travel in time and undo all the consequences of his actions. No surprise, Swiper manages his way back onto the nice list. He gets some nice prezzies and shares a present with Dora. My question here is, shouldn't kids be taught that actions have consequences? That maybe kleptomaniac thieves should not necessarily be put on the nice list and have to deal with the consequences of their bad behavior? Even if they claim he's genuinely sorry, I'm pretty sure he just wants the presents. What if I say I won't do it again? And I'm pretty sure he doesn't stop swiping after this episode. And you may be asking yourself, how is this even slightly a Christmas Carol adaption? That's a good question, and to answer it, I have no idea. I mean, there's not even a ghost of Christmas past, future, or present. In fact, I think the only aspect of the original Christmas Carol story that wasn't butchered was a time travel aspect. But if you'd told me this was a Back to the Future homage, I would have believed you just as much. As I've said before, I love time traveling themes in cartoons. And seeing Dora older was actually a nice little bit of character development. But calling this a Dora Christmas Carol seems like false advertising. And I've got to point out, with all due respects to the voice actor, Swiper's voice is just annoying. Hey! I got one of the ornaments on my card already! I must be learning the spirit of Christmas! And I hope you enjoy the songs here, because Adora Christmas Carol is determined to play every single one of its songs twice. Maybe some people will be okay with this, but personally I can't stand the songs in Dora. So these songs were a grueling task to sit through once, yet alone twice. Overall, Bora's Christmas Carol is just a bore of an episode. And the number one abysmal Dora the Explorer episode is... Dora Helps the Birthday Whistle. 
As we know, Dora is inclined to break the fourth wall and shout questions at viewers, always waiting a long drawn out time for kids to respond. This has been a big point of criticism for both adults and kids, as they actively interrupt an episode repeatedly, break immersion, and give us these long awkward silences where we have to wait. And Dora Helps the Birthday Whizzle is the greatest culprit of this crime. But what is this episode actually about in the first place? According to a book Dora reads, there's a mythical creature called a birthday whistle that wields a magic wand. Now, I don't mean to be juvenile, but does anyone else think of a toilet joke when they hear the term birthday whistle? Anyway, whenever someone makes a wish on the <laughs> whistle's birthday, the birthday whistle will grant their wish. On the whistle's own birthday, he wishes for wings. But alas, the Whizzle loses his wand due to the whizzling wind. He blew the wishing wand away from him. <clears throat> so Dora takes it upon herself to jump into the book and return the wand to the whizzling whizzle. So we are treated to Dora taking the wand and going about granting birthday wishes for others while singing the same nauseating song over and over. We're And these long annoying pauses. Look at this. What's the dragon wishing for? Do you see something that can give us a ride? Yes. And these pauses just go on forever. And there's so many. I've counted them. They do these long annoying pauses 39 ah. times throughout the episode. And with a runtime of 18 minutes, that means a lot of long annoying silences. It's like if you were watching a long 18 minute cutscene of a game, and every 30 seconds the game just froze for a while. This episode has zero sense of pacing and flow, and was just weird to watch. I would imagine even the most invested kid would get tired of continually shouting at their TV every time Dora demands it. In fact, at least two and a half minutes of this entire episode is dedicated to absolutely nothing at all. Void. Nil. Nothing. And since many of these sections have characters standing perfectly still, that means zero animation. At least with other episodes on this list, you can see a crumb of something to them. But Dora and the Wizzy whatever is just void of substance. So far, this is the worst episode of Dora the Explorer I've ever seen. But I have a hunch this isn't the last time I see her. Hmm? Oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, Boo, I should put on my hat. Sunny up. With all of that said, even if I personally dislike these Dora episodes, I don't feel they teach many particularly terrible messages. Even if she's loud, annoying, and yells too much, I think Dora's polite and friendly enough to be a reasonable role model, and I can certainly imagine worse characters appearing on the occasional lunchbox or rutch sack. But you may have to occasionally encourage your niece to speak like a normal person. Can you say delicioso? She'll grow out of it. But personally, I say, if TikTok raised kids have the attention span for anything on television nowadays, I'd personally recommend Lazy Town, Puff and Rock, or Sesame Street instead. There's tons of good kids titles out there, it's just a matter of looking in the right place. And if you think I missed any particular Dora episodes, or you'd like me to do more lists like this in the future, feel free to let me know in the comments below. You have anything to add, Boo? Oh, that's a good point, I should have mentioned that. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.